Greetings YouTube, first finger here, and more Final Fantasy 4 today, we're going to continue on through our onslaught of the Lunar Subterrain, and what a journey it's been so far, we've got a couple of bosses, well not really bosses, but optional encounters to take on today so that we can loot some good stuff, please do come and join me, hopefully we'll make even more progress today as we head towards, or race towards rather, the end of the game, so thanks for joining me, don't forget if you enjoy watching you can hit the like button, and let's go and see what lies ahead. First of all, you'll have to excuse me because I'm having a bit of a hay fever attack today. I think the pollen count's quite high, so I'm really suffering, but I'm still going to persevere through the walkthroughs that I'm making at the moment. And before we go any further, we are just going to switch Cecil's kick ability around. But I'm going to do so actually when we get to the fight where we need to go ahead and change that because we could get some random encounters on the way and kick is useful, I guess, isn't it? Uh, we're going to start just by heading east here out of the save room, make sure you're healed up of course. And we're going to head on into the next door here. And I'm looking for a pedestal. And as you can see it's got a Holy Lance item on there. I'm just going to wipe my nose a sec. Oh. So this is where we need to just go ahead and switch out that kick command since the attack button is going to just be more useful here. So there's going to be a specific way in which we fight this and this isn't the, this isn't the boss. Okay, so we'll walk the one extra step we need to actually uh, activate this fight. And it's not a tremendously difficult fight. We do all get the doom cast on the party, on every party member. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use Kane to cry. We're going to use Rydia to summon the Harmux. We need to kill him before the thing runs out. Uh, Edge needs to attack. I don't know why I cast Bless with him. And then we're going to dual cast. Uh, if I can find it. Holy, there it is. And then we just attack with Edge and Cecil continually. Kane is going to jump, of course. It's very nice of this boss to cast haste on us, although I'm guessing that also speeds up the timer as well. He's got 33,000 health, so that's why I'm just needing to hit him with the strongest abilities that we have. Holy's a good one. Especially with dual cast. Cecil, you are useless sometimes. He does like to cast Shell and protect on himself. But as you can see, he's not too much trouble at all, is he? So we get the Holy Lance for killing the Plague Horror, which is the name of that enemy we just fought, Mini Boss or whatever you want to call him. And without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and equip that on Kane. It's a nice upgrade for him as you can see, look at that attack. And a boost to accuracy as well, which is always a bonus, isn't it? So Kane's going to be having fun here on out with that new weapon of his. No surprise, we're going to head back to save our game at this point. We do have another mini boss coming up as well. And the next room to the east also has a couple of nice items in. Kane, with his new weapon, managed to smash that enemy for maximum damage with his jump command, which was nice to see. Right, before doing anything in here, we need to head back down to the abilities menu and give Rosa the piercing magic ability. So we're just going to replace her HP plus 50% for the time being. Piercing magic basically makes reflect on the party null and void. And as you approach then you'll be thrust into battle with the Lunasaur here. 
We'll attack with ease, cry with Kane, pretty much the usual stuff. Uh, if he starts off with this attack, then we're basically in trouble and we need to reload. I am going to try and see if I can get out of this actually, which will be interesting to see. So what we're going to do is, I've cast a remedy on what's a face, Rosa. We're going to assume that on everyone. I don't know if I should have done this the other way around, I guess we'll find out. In fact, yeah, I'm going to do this the other way around. So we'll cast a rise on Kane and then assume that on all, using our omni casting ability. Attack. Wait for Rosa to do something here. Yes, there we go. And now we get everyone back to normal here. Obviously they need to be cured up. So that Omni casting ability is a big help as you can see. Did we get cry off? I'm not sure if we did, did we? So let's go ahead and do so now. Okay, we don't need that, so let's go ahead and haste on everyone. And then cure on everyone. And then we'll start getting the attacks in, as well as the bar and morts, which we all know and love by this point. There we go. Haste is up. We're nicely healed. And off goes Kane. Hopefully to do a nice amount of damage when he plops back. Yeah, that's good damage that is right there. Let's get a cure guard going. I don't think we need anything else at this point. And Yeah, let's just go for another cure guard. As long as you keep everybody healed, then we should be laughing all the way to the end of this fight really. That was a bit of a tough opening, I'll admit that. But with this omni casting of haste and Asuna. We can get everyone recovered quite quickly, can't we? This guy has 46,000 health, by the way. In fact, something that we probably can do, which I should have done near the start, but I was resurrecting everyone then, is we can actually dual cast slow and holy on this guy. We won't get the opportunity to now, didn't need to. But if you do that at the start, it might just make things a little bit easier. And then if you're not healing, you can just dual cast holy throughout as well. He won't like that, trust me. The good news is, is that you are, of course, right near the save point still, so if everything goes wrong, you haven't really lost out on anything. Right, ribbons. Two of them. Very nice items. What we're going to do is throw one onto Rosa. What the ribbon does is basically, um, there it is, look, it not only got good defences as you can see, but it basically makes you immune to pretty much all of the negative status effects in the game. Uh, there's, I think, a very few exceptions to that, so uh, particularly, I'm trying to think which ones there are. Slow, I don't think it guards against slow, but the rest it does. Maybe sap as well. Uh, basically, you want to give one to Rosa, that's because she has the Omni Casting Haste ability, so if everybody gets hit by uh, AoE negative status ailments, she won't be affected. Get to that Omni Cast, Asuna off, sorry not Haste, and you know, you're laughing again. Right, in terms of the other one, I don't think it really matters all that much, but I guess maybe you can give it to anyone really. Should we go ahead and give it to Rydia because she has some nice attacks, doesn't she? And it is good defence as well. Good for the ladies.
head back to the save point at this point of course. Make sure you've saved your game and you'll also want to give Rosa the HP plus 50% ability back. So we're going to head back to the previous floor now. And there's a couple of things that we didn't get before that we now can get. Right then. If we head back to the chest that we looted earlier on, then there's actually a secret passageway we can head to here as well. And it's just here, look. It's kind of like a bridge, I guess, but completely invisible, which is a little bit strange, but there you go. Once around the other side, we're just going to follow the path here. And you can see there's an exit, so we're going to make our way through. By the way, those goblin fellas that we just saw, you want to ignore those as much as possible. Uh, by ignore them, what I mean is uh, don't listen to what they tell you. Because they what, basically what it is, they like to cast Libra on themselves. And that tells you that they uh, are weak to thunder. If you cast thunder, they onslaught you with all manner of nasty stuff. Don't listen to them. Ignore them. Just attack them normally. Get out of the battle. Move on with life. Uh, anyway... We can see there's another chest here, so just make sure we've mapped out this bit of area. And there's a golden apple we can go ahead and loot. Fortunately, there's no actual uh, enemy encounter with that one. Then we're going to head over to the east here. Remember not to heal any characters that have the curse ability. Um, anyway, once you reach the final section here, this will take you to a teleporter, which will keep you on this floor, but we'll just put you over on the other side here. At this point, we just need to head north to another teleporter, but hopefully also completing the map as we go. Uh, at least that was going to be the plan. I seem to have missed something. Anyway, this brings us back to B5, but I'm going to go and see why I didn't explore that whole map. Interestingly, it was right at the start of that map that I needed to explore. So that was a bit annoying, but there you go, I've done it. Um, it looked like it was complete on the actual map itself, so why it wasn't, I'm not sure, but there you go. Back on the B5 floor now, after that little detour, trying to complete the map. There's another chest here, which you can see as you come into the room. And it contains a protect ring, which is quite useful, along with an enemy ambush of our old friend, the behemoth. So first thing we're going to do is pretty much the usual stuff. We're going to cast Blink onto Cecil and we're also going to cast Haste onto the party now that we have the Omni casting ability and we're going to use Rydia to summon Bahamut and just attack with our other characters. I guess Bless won't hurt but we're just going to attack anyway. And just keep Blink up on Cecil while you take this fella out. Those guys are quite easy now, in all honesty. It's a nice 41,000 experience, anyway. Uh, as far as that protect ring goes, Kane's a good idea. Helps keep him alive a little bit longer, which means that he'll be able to make better use of the Phoenix ability when it's needed in emergencies. After that, we're just going to continue north, and we should complete this map now. Yes, no messing around, fortunately, uh, as there was previously. And we get three sirens for our trouble. And another teleporter. And a lovely save point. So we're definitely going to be making use of that. So I recommend using a cottage at this point because we have a tough boss coming up. We actually have a very tough fight coming up now. So I'm going to dedicate the next episode to that. Which means I'm going to be saying goodbye to you all today. But thanks for joining me. And please do come back again soon. We're going to crack on once again with Final Fantasy IV next time. So please do come back for that. If you've enjoyed the episode, don't forget to hit the like button. And be subscribed to the First Finger Gaming YouTube channel. And I'll see you soon. Cheers all. Take care.